Welcome to the Recruitment Rollercoaster podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz, and today I'm uh, in Manchester. I'm with Jake Whitby, uh, who's a senior consultant at Oakwell Hampton. So I'm in uh, their offices uh, recording the podcast today. And um, look, great to finally meet you, mate. Yeah, thanks thank you very much speaking for speaking on uh, uh, LinkedIn and stuff, haven't we? So, yeah. Um, as you know, where I always like to start, how did uh, Jake from Manchester? into the world of recruitment, mate. So, Talk to me. Yeah, well, thanks very much for coming down, nice. first of all. So it all started, I guess, after uni. Didn't really know what was happening, and then finished uni. What did you do at uni? I did international business. Okay. So always, like, business, technology, and then it was like, oh, hey, like, this big world of sales is there. Mm. So spent a couple of months getting a job, and then I was doing SaaS-based sales. Oh, really? Um, so like you got a, straight into that? Yeah, yeah, like a telematics company down oh, in right. Reading. So moved down there for a oh, year. Oh, really? That was sick. Really? Yeah, I was like 21, flying all over the world, like selling software, meeting clients. Nice. That was pretty sweet. Like, f- I remember... Um, fl- got flown to like LA in the first week of work. Really? For like the Neo, like Decent. new employee orientation. So anyway, did that for a year. Wanted to come back to Manchester. Reading was a bit of a shithole, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, so came back to Manchester, did some interviews, and then I joined... Um, I, w- I always thought about being a financial advisor. So I okay. kind of did, a- did some interviews there. Then I got a job at a company called Think Money. Okay. Um, and then I got um, an interview and a job at a company called NetSource. Okay. Small little, about 20-man recruitment company run by a guy called Nick Paul. Um, nice company. And it was it was more, it, it was an old, older workforce, let's say. The kind of, I was like young 21 and they're like, you know, 30, 40 type yeah. workforce. Really nice people. They had some big accounts that they were working um, stayed there about four or five months and just thought, you know, I wanted something. So you went into recruitment on that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So stayed there for four or five months. Um, thought there's just more. It was literally because they wanted to utilize my sales experience. Yeah, yeah. It was first day, there's a computer, go and open Ooh, up the deep. Go and open up some accounts. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, bec- yeah, because of my sales experience, it was very much like, yeah, fine, I'll get on the phone, smash the phone. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, must, really? yeah, muster something up. Really? Yeah. We, so what, what was your perception of recruitment at that point? Had you like dealt with recruiters? Dealt with recruiters. Um, recruiters. Yeah, it was a guy, a guy called Dale Wetter from This Is Prime who now runs oh, yeah. his own little graduate recruitment company. He started okay. this year. He seems to be doing really well. And I re- looking back, he just used like all the tactics. All the classics. Yeah, all the tactics. So you on that Rolex, looking, mate. Looking back, I was just like, oh, you made me look like a chump. Like. <laughs> 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 I was like, he had me over there. But obviously, it got me into the world of recruitment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So how long have you been in recruitment? It's about, I'm coming up to kind of like four and a half years now, I think. So like five years. Yeah, yeah, getting there. Mad. Okay. Yeah. So... Okay, where I always like to touch on before you uh, would talk about how where you went after that first yeah. experience, like how tough was that then? Like, so obviously it made sense that they'd try and utilize your sales experience, get this lad in Jake, he can mm. do sales, just get him making loads of BD calls. I feel how was that grim? I think it was, it wasn't too grim, okay, to be honest. I think because of my from doing sales and just smashing the phones nine to five, the first wake up call was like on the first day I was like, Oh, I'm rocking at nine and they're like, nah, nah, half eight and I was like, Whoa <laughs> <laughs> Like, why was I never told this? Yeah. Like, yeah. why was I never told this before? Um I'm working till six as well. Yeah, yeah. Um it was it wasn't grim, it was just like it wasn't until I went to my next place that I really, really? Yeah. And I think because I did a couple of places. I did about like twenty grand in mm. like I think five or six months, which is not setting the world on fire, but not with like no real training and just told to like go on and do with it, kind of get on and yeah, crack so on it, with it, it. That literally was the crack. Like. Yeah, but they, but they had you, like net, they were nice nice people to be honest. Yeah, so enough. I keep in contact with Nick quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the old MD. Okay, so. so then after that, after that, you then joined uh, joined a company called Energize. Okay, and then you was there for. I was there for. I think I, around three years or okay. so, I think. Three years. Yeah. And then um, came back. Yep. Which we'll get on to. And then you joined Oakwell. Yeah, I joined Oakwell. And then you've now been here nearly a year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, mate. So, um, all right. So, clearly had the biggest stint at Energize. Yeah. And 
was you always doing what you you was always doing perm you said yeah perm for the four three years i was there four, yeah. three years okay yeah. and then was it the same market that you ended up in when you were doing the bd role or was it a different market how, how do you mean the sector what so sector yeah i did dot net birmingham okay that was my little baby dot net birmingham yeah yeah what does that mean mate i was doing microsoft development in birmingham really <laughs> yeah yeah so as in like you wasn't in birmingham no no i was in manchester in the offices okay. went, down, went down there you know meet some clients birmingham's all right i went there for the first time like the other week it's not bad it's it's all I mean, right it's the little business it's not manchester part. You just love Manchester, <laughs> didn't you? It, it is Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mate. So look, let, let's break down that that three year period. So like, obviously, what what I'd, I'd love, to, what I'm looking forward to getting into is, um, obviously, during that time at Energize, you went to America, right? And yeah. How how many years was that in? That was like eighteen months in. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so like one and a half year, one and a half years doing .NET Birmingham, one and a half years doing America. Okay. Yeah. Sweet. So yeah, looking forward to to dive into that. But I guess. Before we get into this sort of American um, journey, mm. like obviously that was your your solid stint. So I guess what went on at Energize in the first twelve months, and is that where you really sort of earned your stripes? And I guess so, yeah. Um, so we went there. The reason why I went um, Energize was because of the training. Really? Like I went from a place that didn't really have anything, and I wanted yeah, yeah. to be a recruiter. I kind of four months in, I like I like it. I wanted to really kind of hone my skills, and that's mm. what they did there. You know, for the first. First kind of couple of months, you go through some you know good training. They won some awards for it, which is decent, um, and then cracking on. But it w wasn't easy, you know. We didn't yeah. build for like four or five months. Um, what after the training? Well, you gotta let some time like kick <laughs> no, in. Obviously, well, fair enough. I didn't build for for four or five months, and then the first month we did build, we did four deals in the first month. So it is. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but okay. That, no, that's interesting though. So I guess. Just a quick one on that, because I think that's a really interesting point, because a lot of people end up in recruitment, fall into it, as mm. you hear all the time, and then they obviously, yeah, chucked in the deep end. I definitely got chucked in the deep end. Yeah. Um, but again, I joined a, a small business. So, I mean, I did get put on some like a training course, but it was all right, it wasn't yeah. great. So I guess, how, how looking back, how do you think that training, like, where do you think it helped you the most? If I you think were to say, do you know what I mean? It's the process. The process, yeah. Yeah. Because it is, it can be chaos, can't it? If you've like been shown no. Process. Yeah, I think something I want to kind of talk about in a bit, but you can teach anyone the process of recruitment. Mm. It's that it's getting, not rocket science. Yeah, no, it's getting on the phone though, being able to talk to people. If you yeah. can talk with people, you can get taught the process, mm. and that's what that's what they did. They taught me the process, and that's kind of what I'm always looking to improve. I guess is, yeah, is your yeah, process. Yeah. As so, a, so, so yeah, so they enabled you to go from Jake get on the phones, make stuff happen mm. to. Oh, actually, there's like a clear process where yeah. if I follow this, I have a real high chance of having more success. Or yeah. if I do more of this part of the process, it will give me a it, better chance and all that. It went from scattergun approach to yeah. this market, doing this market, knowing every company in your market, who mm. the, you know, the cliche movers and shakers are, mm. what the kind of skill is within Microsoft that all the companies look for. Mm. So it got to a point where it got to a point after 18 months in, I was the hottest thing in Birmingham was Angular. Okay. So like .NET developers with Angular, and I'd just headhunt .NET devs and I'd get them three or four interviews at three or four places. And Made some cash. Yeah, exactly. So it went from putting up options on the board of companies to putting up options of the board of candidates. Mm. Um, because, it, and if you work with them exclusively, which you should always be pushing for, yeah. if, you, you know, if you're decent in your market, um, so they're only working with you and because you you know, get yourself known within the market, you, you know, you're the person to come to. How did you get to know your market? It was getting on the phones, really? speaking, speaking, to, to speaking to people. Did you do yeah. anything else to like help you have the best possible chance of understanding not, these people, what was going on in their world? And these really not, not then. Cause like three, four years ago, like there wasn't this building your brand on LinkedIn yeah. back then, I don't think. So it was yeah, very much eight till seven. Cause I'd always try and get in a bit earlier, stay a bit later to speak with candidates. Mm speaking to candidates yeah mm. it's like two that's how you really got two, to yeah know your three market. four hours on the phone every day what are the trends are in the market who's hiring um and spending a lot of time speaking to candidates and really finding out what they're what they want mm. whether it's they're looking now or six months down the line yeah and really understanding that. yeah exactly because i think it's a lot easier when you can bring up a candidate that you've already spoken to and say, you told me you wanted X, Y, and Z. I've got that. I've just spoke to them. Are you interested? Well, I wasn't actually looking, but yeah, if you've got that, mm. it's, that's when, you know, recruitment, I guess, clicks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And um, so the first so the first four months you didn't bill? Nope. Do you think about quitting? I did a bit, but I was getting jobs and interviews. 
Really? So, so, it, oh, so you was it, get, it, yeah. there was something there to be like, now nah, I am. Yeah. So how, what was the type of environment around you? Was it like, Jake, keep doing what you're doing? Yeah. Pay off. You had yeah, that. very supportive. That, that's key, isn't it? I, I think. think I think there in any recruitment company within a, a couple of months, you can see if people are going to make it or not. Why? What, what, what do you think? What, that di- what stands out? That outreach. That the activity? The activity. Yeah. If someone's doing activity, yeah. like I said, you can teach them the process. If they're not doing the activity... Yeah, then if, they're, if then the they're reducing their chances it. of getting the opportunity exactly. to, yeah. But if they're not giving themselves enough opportunity. Exactly. Recruitment is a hard game as it is. Yeah. You know, it's a um, saturated industry. And if you're not doing the activity, then mm. it, I, I'd say it's not for you, to be honest. And then you did four deals in your fifth month. Yeah, man. To go to IB for after that, mate. We went to... Where did we go that? We did go to IB for that <laughs> year. Actually. Yeah, we did. No, they took the, Classic. It, was the, it was the 10-year anniversary and they took everyone. Really? So, yeah, they took like yes. 50 of us. It so was sick. Just you hit four deals, mate. Nah, nah. It was <laughs> sick. No, it was, that was a good trip. That's jokes. Okay, so what... What so then after that was it like you're building your confidence, things were clicking, oh. and thing it snowballed like uh, peaks and troughs, mate. Really? Yeah, like one month to have a big month, two or three months blanking, have another big month. So it was mm. like learning your craft and like how to get consistent. Mm. But yeah, peaks and troughs of recruitment. Yeah, like that year, that year. What did you do in that year? I did just shy of a hundred. Okay. Yeah, which opened up a brand new market. Yeah. I was quite happy with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I did 24 in my first year, mate. Yeah, well, I wasn't th- opening up a look at, look at you now, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, cool. Fair enough. So I guess just a quick one on that. So you said there about opening the, the, the new market, right? Yeah. How, so let, let's talk a bit about that, just because obviously it was a process, as you said, in the first year, four months you didn't build, but and then by the end, you had, you had obviously a good result from mm. scratch. A lot of people ask me, mate, about how they can go about that or yeah. build the business development piece and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you've spoken about activity and all these things, but I guess how, how did you approach it? So first and foremost, I wanted to know every company hiring .NET developers in Birmingham mm. over the space of the year. Did you just get given that patch? Yeah, they just said to me, we want you to open up .NET Birmingham. Okay, cool. We looked into it, a few companies there, go and make it happen kind of thing. Okay, cool. So you mapped out? Mapped out every company .NET. How did you do that, LinkedIn? LinkedIn, yeah, LinkedIn. Okay. Power of LinkedIn, really. Mm. Don't know what. So mapped that out, then what? Uh, mapped it out and then got on the phone, spoke with candidates. It was like first couple of months speaking with as many candidates as possible. So you went on candidates first? Yeah. Whilst you're stripping CVs, you know, getting the data ready, and then come BD, you know, you're already going to have a few candidates and then just bringing the company up and selling mm. in their candidates. Is that how you... So, you, yeah, so if, I, if I'm listening right now when I'm early on in building my market... Double down on candidates. If you're if you're ringing up a company and just say hi, I'm I'm Jake and can I recruit for you? They're gonna just, oh mate, you're gonna yeah get, exactly. Get but if you ring them up and say hi, I'm Jake. I know you're looking for X and I've got X and Y. Yeah, it's way more powerful. Exactly, it? and that that was that was kind of yeah the craft that I guess I honed yeah. that year. And um, how was it challenging at first to like? Because I get I'm assuming you you knew fuck all about these people. In terms of like their skill set and yeah, I guess a bit. I like technology, so yeah. I actually like talking to candidates about technology, about products, how they're building them, what are they doing to overcome challenges for their customers. Mm. So you, you've got a bit of a personal yeah, exactly yeah. Um, okay. so, so did, do you think that helps you then? Hundred percent, because you're ringing up, you're ringing up candidates, and you're not just you're asking them what trends they're looking in the market. What are they interested in? Ah, oh, I've not heard that before. And then go and speak to someone else about that. Yeah. It it just makes you stand out from the crowd, doesn't it? Because mm. um, I think, obviously, I can imagine, <clears throat> obviously, as we know, it's, uh, it's p- particularly tech, it's a very saturated market. Yeah. I think if I'm, I just feel like if I'm a recruiter, I'm in the tech market and I get hold of a dot summon whatever developer, mm. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, I could I could definitely place this person as you got this yeah. skill set and then it's like quite it can be quite transactional because you know you got to act quick far, and fast. Yeah. Like, you know like what I mean? It, in about after about just over a year in, it got to a point where I knew that all the all the companies wanted .NET and Angular. So then I'd just go and headhunt .NET and Angular people. Do so these types of people yeah, but do these people in the tech market like to pick up the phone? No. No does does anyone <laughs> does anyone in so the like tech market? So when you're saying you're headhunting them, mate, what do you mean? Ah, oh, classic, call them at the desks. Really? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, not many of them like it, but call them at the desks, get the mobile number, speak to them after work. 
Really? Yeah. So it's always that. What, what's the spiel though, mate? Because that's like, you know I mean, some, I don't reckon people are willing to do that. Some people. Well, that's the thing. It wasn't everyone calling them at the desk. I'd, it's, you know, calling them at the desk and sending out loads of emails. The, the, mm. What you want to do is, if you call them at the desk, you know, obviously apologize. They're going to get called at the desk. These people have happened it, mm. you know, get it before. Apologize and just get a time to speak with them in the evenings. But what did you say? Why? What? Okay, Jake, mate, I'm at work. What, That's what, absolutely fine. But what's the, what's the goal for you to... Why should I give you time after work? Do you know what I mean? How, yeah. do, you, how do you leverage it to be like, this is why you should speak to me after work? Um, you're, how I'd al always say it was, I'm keen to understand your career drivers. Okay. And then if I have an opportunity that would match up with your career drivers, would you be interested in that? Oh, yeah, right. What's your mobile number? Yeah, I'll okay, call you fair. at six o'clock. Yeah, so rather than, seven. rather than shoving a job down the Yeah, you never, you never headhunting. If you're headhunting someone at work, which I don't do now, to be fair, this was... Few no, years ago. The, the only reason why I'm, I'm pushing on it a bit is because one, I never really did it. Mm. Two, um, I was with a, a business last night that have uh, just started to implement headhunting in their yeah. sort of sales activity. So they've decided that they're going to two hours a day, an hour hour um, slots. They're gonna everyone's gonna be headhunting. Yeah. Um, headhunting now though, because of LinkedIn, it's you know you can class sending someone a message on LinkedIn. Yeah, no, you're right. I guess it's it's resourcing to get them on the phone at a better time to speak. So you yeah, speak yeah. to someone at work, you call them on the mobile even at work, because there's plenty of tools out there now to get someone's mobile numbers. Yeah, this Lusher tool, isn't it? Exactly, what, what, are you mentioning, what are you mentioning that? <laughs> <laughs> mate, everyone uses uh, it, mate. It's not a secret, Not everyone. Not everyone. Mate, that Giants is, don't know mate if you think that's a secret, mate, that's not a secret, son. <laughs> um, <laughs> how did, I, I was having this conversation last night, like... Oh, everyone must know about How, that. like, how... That's thing, people get pissed off and you're like, how have you got, how have you got yeah, my personal like, number? How, do, how have you got my personal number? What you're you say you're to a headhunter. I'm a headhunter. What do you say to that? I'm a headhunter. Head yeah. <laughs> if I can get no, your number, just think of the talent I can get you. Oh, <laughs> mate, that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, and you get that same reaction. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, fair enough. No, just want to laugh. It's cheesy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, no. You laugh. know what? I totally get what you're saying. It's like, look, you need to get opportunities to speak to people when they're a bit more, uh, have a bit more free time, open to discuss. And then, it, as you said, it's, well, well, look, I haven't got a job to shove down your throat, but are you? Are, what are your drivers? This is why it'd what, be helpful what, for me to understand because what are your what are your kind of three most important things about your career? Yeah. More time off, certain new skills you want to learn, mm. closer to home, working from home, yeah, and yeah. then you know you can build up a, a picture of what someone is looking for and might move for. Yeah. So in three six months time, you get a client that's offering that, yeah. you can ring them up. And be like, I've got this. Oh, you know what? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, oh, yeah. Jake. Oh. So, that, so you really start to get good at that. Yeah, that was that was key. kind of yeah key for me really. Okay, and then and then and then that that then allowed you to then open up doors on clients because you then have people to spec out and yeah sell. exactly that you would you get the candidates, spec them out, and then build up relationships like that. And then you want to, you know, a year eighteen months of that people are coming to you then. Mm. It's, Is that what you found? Yeah, I have found that in the, the markets that I've built. Give it 18 months to two years. Mm. Or, yeah, a year to two years and things start coming to you. Mm. And that's when you're going to... I think a big part of that, though, is like... I mean, people aren't going to come to you if you're a shit recruiter, are they? No. Like, So I, how did you maintain... Like, Why do you think people came back to you? Besides obviously being a great headhunter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you <laughs> like know what? what? It's, again, a bit cheesy, but just being nice. Really? Like, being What friendly. does that mean, though, being nice? Like, so all of my... My, like, my best candidates I've placed and worked with, the clients, like I'd consider them friends now. Really? Yeah, have a laugh and a joke with them. Talk about the family life, what they did to get up to the weekend because mm. you, you're speaking with people. Yeah. And people, you know, outside of work, they're going to have a life. So if you can just connect with them on a different level other than have you got a job for me or yeah, yeah. do you want a new job? And it, it's, I mean, it sounds so basic, but you'd be surprised how many people don't Exactly, have that mate. And, like, you look on, you, like, you see on LinkedIn, like, like it's people bashing recruiters and mm. that if you're that type of person, yeah, it might get you a few quick wins, but you're not going to build up a sustainable market doing that because word gets about. Um, did that happen? Did, did you sort of, was this like quite instinctive though for you to approach it that way or is that just sort of uh, who you are or like? Did yeah, I guess a bit who I am, to really? be honest. Always. But where did, where did you start noticing that it really helped you? Do you know what I mean? Like, because I'm sure it got to a point where you was like intentionally making sure that you tried to connect with these people and build real relationships and stuff, or? I, I noticed it just over my recruitment career. Really? Like the, the, my best clients I've, I've got on board have come from being like friends with a developer and they've like 
they've basically Burgess championed you in to like mm. the hiring hiring manager. Mm. There, that's I think how you like the best relationships I've built yeah, anyway. Yeah. So then, um, and then eight months before you left to America, where did this American thing come from, mate? So I think the company just wanted to expand. So I was, I was there. So joining November, I did a full full year, and then it was Q the end of Q one of the following year. So the end of Q one, I think twenty seventeen, I yeah, think. Yeah. Um, and I just uh, had a bad accident, snapped my leg. In our, snapped your leg. Yeah, yeah, badly. How? I race motor. Well, I used to race motorbikes. Really? Yeah, yeah, and just race motorbikes. Yeah, that just sounds extremely dangerous. Yeah, there you go. That's why I've got a lot. Oh, of, yeah, so that that put me out for like a month. I was off work for a month. Really? To be fair, grim. yeah. The, the company energized looked after me. Yeah, that's class. Um, I remember coming back from the hospital, driving back from the hospital. I've been in the hospital for four days and closed a deal on the drive back. Shut up. Yeah, yeah. Because I wanted to make sure I got paid. Mm. So I used closing that deal to make sure I got my full pay. Because obviously, like a year in, they don't have to. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So you scratched yours there back. They'll scratch yours yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, so. Um, and then it was after that. And I noticed. I noticed my market because I was out my market for a month. Mm. I just noticed everything slowed down. And then they announced they're going to open America. Who, Energize? Yeah, yeah. And then they asked me. And I was a bit like, eh, nah. Not sure. Yeah. Then they asked me again. I was a bit like, mm, maybe. And then they asked me again. And I was just like, yeah, fuck it. May as yeah. well. Got nothing to lose. 20. So how, how did you approach it? So we started in about, we started in about June. And it was, it was hardcore for six months. Like, so you was doing all of it in the UK I was first? Doing, yeah, from, doing American from hours? the UK, American hours. So he was working 12 to like half nine. How was that? You know what? At the first, at first I'd, I was a bit unsure, but then after a couple of months in, it was sweet, mate. Got used to it. Yeah, because you'd wake up, at, wake up at 10, go to the gym, go to work, and by the time you're finishing, all your mates are half caught in the pub. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that and bad? And you don't have to worry about like... Yeah. You, know, you don't have to worry about getting home because you've got to be start, start work at seven and getting to office at eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I hated it at first, but then it got pretty sweet. And um, you did that for six months solidly? Did that until, I did that for about four months. And, and what moved market, how did you identify the market? We just did, I just did what I do best, tech, tech New York. And because New York was closer to the UK because of the time, time difference, difference. That's why you cho- did New York. chose that. Yeah, yeah. But what, what was the market there? The same that you did in Birmingham? I started .NET, yeah. And then as time progressed, it got to kind of anything and everything, really. Anything and everything. Yeah, which is... That sounds interesting. Yeah, that sounds hard work. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really kind okay, of mate, how to so do it. So let, let's break that down a bit then. So four, So you worked in Manchester yeah. four months solidly. Yeah. Build, trying to build up, obviously, a sort of American client yeah, yeah. recruitment desk before you went over. Yeah, yeah. I mean... How did you approach that? Obviously, yeah, like how the hell did you approach that? Because obviously America's a big place, right? So we started off doing New York, yep. net. There was a few of us doing it. One girl did digital marketing and my other mate. who We were all really good mates who okay. helped it. Um, that so you was all quite good mates and all the intention, the plan was to go to America. Yeah, together. yeah. Okay, that's cool. And then, um, so we just, me and a guy who I actually work with now, yeah. we was... Um, we just worked together closely, helping each other open up accounts. I think I did .NET, he started with Java. Mm. Um, and then it just got to a point where we were just like, whatever we could, whatever was it again, we could get our hands on. Focused, like, what was the BD That strategy? was a bit more BD focused. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Um, I, I don't really know, to be honest. We, just, just... We, we just wanted to pull some jobs. Yeah. Yeah, I think okay. we just and pulled some jobs, really. How, how was it, The obviously, the Mancunian just... Calling up these American businesses, <laughs> yeah. like how'd that go down? All right, it's the same as any BD, isn't it? Like yeah. you got you got to knock, knock on enough doors to to break but some like down. Because that's obviously what, I, got I told, imagine. obviously got told to you know politely go away yeah. several times. But but like I, I'm always interested, like because I think it'd be um, an easy assumption to make. Well, you like, just oh, like would they take? I don't know, like UK recruiter. I know it happens a lot now. UK to EU, blah blah blah. But how people, was it perceived? People always thought because I'm from Manchester, where I was Australian. <laughs> for some reason because you don't really? speak the Queen's English yeah you don't speak like you know you do down south <laughs> um, it's a bit more I guess you know northern mm. so people didn't think you were from England so when you say from England you're like what I thought yeah, yeah, always yeah. got mistaken for being Australian how um, a lot of people say and a lot of people have said that people um, in America are, are, are a lot more easier to get hold of or when you do speak to them are a lot more Think open so. to having a conversation well, I didn't think that when I was doing Dot Net Birmingham but now doing Contracts London yeah Really? Like, yeah, you could, you could, they would give you the time of day, you'd get them on the phone, but then you just wouldn't hear from them for 
Really? You just want to hear from them. Yeah. They just wanted to network. That 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 happened quite a lot in like my year, my, like my year there. Is you you'd think you'd crack open a big account, had a like a sick BD call with like the head of talent yeah. or CTO, and just don't hear from them again. Really? And it's that's something I've you know heard multiple times of different people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think but it's just because they're scared of saying you like no. Really? They, they're they very, like yeah, no. they'd, they'd rather not speak to you than say, oh no, we're not going to work with you. And what what and then um. Any, what was your experience in like saying you was a recruiter? Because a lot of people say like the perception is totally different over there. Yeah, I think, well, when we went over in the market, it was, it was really, we didn't know much about it. So we really? just kind of got on the phones and then you realised, we realised straight away internal recruitment was just massive over there. Yeah. Going from... Net, corporate but, recruiter. Yeah, corporate recruiter. Yeah, cool, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Going from doing my, my little small market in Birmingham where all I dealt with CTOs to having yeah. to deal with in, internal recruitment, it was... Not a challenge, but just a change. Different. Yeah, I guess a bit of a challenge. Yeah, exactly. Person, yeah, exactly. And, you know, it, and then if you go behind the backs and go to a hiring manager, most Ooh. of them, yeah, they don't like it. And, like, coming back here, I realised that as well. Yeah. Um, so how what, what how did you have to adapt to that then? What were some of the so things So we started, to... I started targeting kind of startups, Series A, B funded So you could go starters. to the person and yeah. be like, right, okay, yeah. we will sign that off the, or you the, can work the, on The places where I kind of did the, did the deals with were companies that had funding, but it hadn't been announced. Okay. So you'd kind of just be in the right place at the right time. How did you identify those? Was you like reading relevant? Being kind of being all over kind of startup websites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like built in LA. And then just straight up. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, no up, BD, and then it's like you want to, when you're BDing, you don't, sometimes they're not going to have jobs, but you still want to speak to them. Yeah, get on Get on the radar. So it was more, like after when we like actually went to America and we was based in LA and dealing with a lot of startups, it was just more getting my name out there mm. and knowing that when the time is right, I can go to Jake. Yeah. So when they got the investment, I was already in there with them. Yeah. yeah kind yeah. of thing. That makes that makes sense. Then, of, yeah. Did you have to? Did you do any deals before you went over? Yeah, I did one. <laughs> yeah, I did one, and I remember being at the race, the Chester races for like really? uh, an incentive. And uh, what like, you was an incentive and you had not build. Well, no, I did. I built from .NET Birmingham. <laughs> don't give me that. No, just like um, just like a quarterly thing they do. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, don't give me that. Nah, fair. Um, okay, mate. So you did. And so we did. We did one in like within the first three months. So okay. I was just like massive big fee. American. Like, Here we go. American market. Yeah, I'm gonna it. be king. Be king of LA kind of thing. Because <laughs> <laughs> what what was the um what was the, what was the typical deal value over there? Minimum twenty k. A joke. So if you're so mate, that is mental. So when so when terms are typically twenty to thirty five. Obviously, you, you know you can get thirty five percent. I remember when the first time we pitched thirty five percent, we got laughed at down the phone. Really, yeah, <laughs> jokes. Um, but typically, yeah, my average terms are like twenty five percent, and minimum minimum salary for like mid to senior dev was hundred k. So like you're talking senior devs, like seven to ten years experience in LA and San Fran, like 150. And how does that compare to UK now? Like obviously in the market, like obviously you know. So, good, what, so good, what's, good, the, what's the comparison? Well, a good senior dev, so a good senior front, well, a good React dev in London, 70, 80k. Okay. In in. So salaries are higher, yeah. and then typical uh, t- typical terms that you'd agree. Standard, in UK. yeah, 20, 25 percent. UK is 15 to 20, isn't it? Yeah. Mad. Mm, so. But that's that's a big reason with, why with that interested. though companies because it's a bigger decision you tend to is it a slow you, process? yeah they won't use recruiters for like junior candidates okay they won't and it's a much slower process it was like six week sales cycles really? because it's they want to make they have to meet everyone in the business like some so like the interview pro- I've heard that quite a lot yeah. the interview process was really so that, quite fir- that first deal I did I remember there was six stages shut up yeah six stages six stages that's long. But you're chasing it, aren't you? You're doing everything you can to like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sure, like, surely like... They're getting the money's worth. True. That, that's it, aren't they? But candidate experience there, mate. Oh, top notch. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Though? Candidate to do six stages. You just got to manage the candidate's expectations, yeah. though. If there's, a, if there's a reason why there's another stage, you have to keep that candidate interested in the position. Yeah, of course. Explain to them why there's another stage. And if they want the role, they'll go for it. Yeah, no, no. If there's another fair. stage and they won't do it, they're not going to be that interested. If you got them an offer, they might not even take it. Fair. So, um, completed America. Mm-hmm. You thought you'd go over there. 
Yeah, I thought I'd live the dream for a bit. Live the dream for a bit. So where did you move to? I went to Santa Monica, LA. Okay, and was it was it what was the visa process like? Was that difficult? Or? Um, it was at a time when the the American was just getting. So this was like two years ago. Mm. So it was the wanted. I've I've. It was easy to be honest. Easier. Yeah, yeah. So we just like applied, did some forms, and went down to the embassy for a meeting. Mm. And they were just like, yeah. I've heard it's now it's a lot of difficult. A lot more difficult because. All the companies that have saturated the market in the UK in the past couple of years have set up offices in America. Yeah, in America Every yeah. company now that you see have opened up or got an office in America. Mad enough. It? Yeah. It's just the next step. You know, you did all of Asia, Australia, like Singapore, all that, and just yeah, yeah. next big steps, America. And you moved there on your own with your mates? Yeah, I moved there with um, the girl who was doing digital marketing, Lois, close friend of mine. Um, she's come back now as well. She does internal at that, AM. How, how much of a help was that? It was... Doing it with a mate? It was good because we had each, other back, each other's backs, but we also lived together. So it was just like, say if we both had a bad day, it was, yeah. you know... That must have helped so much, man. Yeah. Compared having, to having go, can you imagine going on your own? It would have been tougher, but because... So in the, in the first year, we did a deal before we went, and then I didn't bill for like eight, nine months. When you got there? When I got there. So it was it was tough, man. Like, and where was all you working the savings... Out? How do you mean? Like, what was you, did you have an office and stuff? Yeah, like we that? had an office. Uh, so we was based in um, like a Regis. Then we moved to WeWork, but yeah. and um, we lived like five minute walk from the office, Decent. which was sick. Like going home for lunch every day, just yeah. to chill out for a bit. But eight nine you, months, yeah, mate, it was tough. Like, so went there, made loads of mates and everything, rinsed my savings, and then obviously after a while, like all your mates are going on trips to like. San Fran, LA, like well, LA, yeah. like San Diego, Vegas, and it's just like, well, you can't, I can't go, I can't afford it. Um, it's not living the life, is it? No, it wasn't, and hence why I'm back home because like, <laughs> it's just like. But what? what okay, let, why was it so tough? Because, like, men mentally. Really. Yeah, because you can't, you can't, if you haven't got money, you can't go out and, and party, can you? And but why don't you think you build? Eight nine months of like, do you know what I mean? What was oh, the mate, challenge there? What did I you think it was probably like going after anything and everything. But like yeah. I said, like I said before, I was having like eight to ten interviews every month, pulling, so that's what I mean, pulling so four or five jobs. It was just like that's why it, that's why I, I think I carried on going because I was just like I know it's going to happen. Like I've been yeah, into yeah. before. But like you was getting interviews. Yeah, and getting interviews. What, what was what was what typically always ended up making those fall through? Was there a common thing or not really? Oh, there'd always be some bullshit reason. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always something. Um, like one before. Before I left, it was like everyone wanted it, wanted the guy, and then it was just like one of the board members was just like, no. Nah. Nah. Uh, what did you learn through that period, mate? Because that must, one, obviously, definitely mentally tough in terms yeah. of you missing out, you moved there for like a better but, life. But you like your whole life on hold, don't you, for like a couple mm. of years to go, go try out this time. But I was t single, 26. Yeah. Someone asked me to go set up an office in LA. Yeah, I mean, why, what's <laughs> the worst that can happen? Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, you could not build for eight, nine months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but that's the thing, like, when I decided to come home, a couple of deals went in. So it was kind of like, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. I'd like already, I was, I was going home, mate. <laughs> what did you learn though? What did you learn, do you think? More about yourself. Myself. In what way? Like being to like, like being able to manage your own like mental stability, I guess. Talk to me. Because it's never nice not billing. It's never yeah. nice not blanking for a month. Mate, it's so horrible. imagine that. Mate, eight, nine months. That's, yeah, mate, that's exactly. a long time. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, like, Proven Biller, uh, well, I thought it was, yeah. you know, opened up new markets, already billed before we went over to America. Had we, um, Don't get me wrong, like, we had a couple of offers that just didn't close or did close, and then they got offered by eBay 50K more, and yeah, they're yeah. going to gonna do that. Like, the big players over there would just counter offer your... So how did you get better at managing your mental piece then? Reading. Kind of read a lot of books, started to, like, meditate and stuff really? like that. And it got, it got to a point where I'd go to the gym... But not to like when you're like early twenties, you go to the trim to like look good for like yeah, look good on the yeah, yeah, exactly, and like look good in the holiday when you go away with the boys for all the girls. But I'd be for yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but, that changes though, doesn't it? Yeah, but now it's just going to the gym for like my own mental health, like my yeah, own like yeah. release of endorphins. Like if I'm, if I'm having a shit day, and I go to the gym at lunch, I feel, like I feel so much better. And if I'm not going yeah, to the it's gym, all so linked, man. Yeah, exactly. And that was that year because. I thought work wasn't going so well. I had to find ways of getting your frustration. Yeah, and not become depressed, basically. Yeah, and yeah, that. So year, what, what sort of stuff would you read then? Out of interest, just like self-help books, 
like that, Tony Robbins. Yeah, like the growth mindset book, that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. stuff. And you know, and well, how do you think that? J- just because, mate. The reason why I'm I'm uh, digging here is just because. Um, Again, a real common thing is um, people ask me about sort of Hisham, how can, I'm having a shit patch, how I'd like try and get people to talk about how they cultivate more resilience and stuff like that. So you've got, you've got to look after yourself. Mate, if 100%. you're like eating healthy, like going to the gym, like it does help, even for 20 minutes. Mate, 100%. I'm not one of them like boys that go to the gym for like two hours, 20 minutes, like 10 minute bike ride, like 10 sets, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. done and you're feeling great. Yeah, yeah. And like reading. And listening to podcasts, like, listen past, like, 18 months, couple of years, listening to a lot of, bo- lot of podcasts. Yeah, there's so much good stuff out Exactly. There. And it's just, instead of, like, there's obviously times when you listen to music, but just a lot of a lot of the things you hear of people resonates. Mm. And then it's it's kind of saying to yourself, oh, that's not just me. Oh, everyone else has that problem. Or oh, everyone else thinks like that. Mm. And it just helps you through the day. The day, you know, the, the peaks and troughs of recruitment, isn't it? There's mm. a, lot of, a lot of peaks, but also a lot of troughs. How did med- meditation help you, mate? Um, Still meditate now, or yeah, yeah, meditate to get sleep every night. Really? Yeah, definitely helps me. Nice. Yeah. What's the? How has that helped you? Um, if there's a lot of things on your mind, because sometimes if you go into bed and your mind's just racing, it's very yeah. hard to switch off in it. Do you think it so has it helped you in recruitment? Do you think? Yeah. So, I'm very, I'm very much a recruiter. I, I can smash the phones all day, but obviously, four or five years in, it can, it can be, it can get tough. So. Yeah. You know, if you on a Monday morning, or well, you don't really smash phones on Monday. I don't anyway. But like, say Thursday afternoon, you're smashing the phones, and it gets to four o'clock, and you've not had a good, you know, conversation with a decision maker. Just go take go go for a wander for five minutes. Yeah, yeah. Go for, that's what's really good about Oakwell. It's very autonomous, so you can just like go for a walk, go to the shops, yeah. go have a ten minute break outside. It's like, yeah, no, go no, your I, thoughts and stuff. Um, Meditation definitely helped me in recruitment and j- just helped me in, uh, and helps me in, in life. I've, I've definitely slacked over the, since I started my own business. Mm. That's definitely been a challenge of mine. But I definitely, in when I was in um, recruitment, I think for me, um, one of my challenges earlier on was like really, I was very prone to getting emotionally attached to like... Oh, yeah. Peop- You've like, already spent the commission in your head, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Every time. Yeah, that's what I mean. So like, like, so it just enabled me to um, have that that tool in my pocket where I was able to take a step back. Mm. That's, that's what, I mean, yeah, that's what meditation can really help you with instead of like just diving straight into a situation or a response or whatever, you get better at sort of taking a moment to be like, well, let me just take a fucking breath here for a second yeah, you, on, and take a second before I react or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you kind of like train your mind to be able to handle bad situation so yeah you know say if you blank for a month and you've got a deal and the deal goes down mentally that can be <laughs> tough on you yeah whereas if you're like you know oh you know what jake like always telling yourself you know you're a good recruiter you've yeah, gone yeah, through yeah. this before Perspective, isn't it? yeah you've gone through this before you know you're dealing with people that, that we are dealing with people that can change their mind it's not like we're selling a product yeah exactly that's x y and z you know they can easily change the mind mm. um or like you think you're rock star candidate you know fucked up the interview because he said something stupid or something and yeah. you've like you said already spent the commission you can't let after being in recruitment so long you, you kind of teach yourself through like meditation and things like that not to let it get to you as yeah, much you can't get you can't get too high on your highs and you can't like exactly it's, it's trying to stay oh you gotta ride sort of, your highs though like yeah you yeah, gotta ride, you gotta your, ride highs, your highs yeah <laughs> but, but like, the lows you can't get high on your own supply for me too much yeah yeah too much I, then, I think as i as recruitment's got as I've been in it longer though, I, I like to see like the juniors more like when they do deals and stuff like that initial yeah, buzz. Like I remember they're doing them four deals in that first month, mate. Oh man. It we went off in that office. Because <laughs> my team, my team, it was like there's five of us in the team and we were the top billing team that quarter. So it was like this is my first proper quarter, like in a recruitment office. We were the top billing team. Like we thought we were big man then. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm sure we both blanked in Q3. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, just to um, wrap up the American experience. Yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, I mean, that. Oh, that well, yeah. Go on, what, what was you going to say? I was just going to say, like, the biggest thing for me when I was out there that helped me get the clients that we did end up billing yeah. with was like networking, mate. Okay, so going to networking events. Going to networking events. Yeah, going to networking events. I went to as many as possible. What was, you, what was this on, like the Meetup app? And yeah, like the Eventbrite, I think it yeah, is. Eventbrite, yeah. Yeah, there's loads in London, but there was, in LA, there was a few there, and that's where 
yeah, the clients that we did bill into, I met from there. Nice. And I even met some of the clients we placed in there. Nice. And then... And what, what was the approach at these sort of events, just out of interest? Oh, I'd go up and speak to everyone. Really? Tell them what you do, what are they doing, what challenges they're facing, really? what do they want to achieve. Straight in there. Yeah. And a lot, of, a lot of times, I'd find myself a lot of like junior devs coming up to me and asking them. Because in America, to get a job in development you've got to be proven. They don't hire juniors to train up. Really? Yeah, they hire, They just hire senior devs. So like to become a dev, you've got to pr be proven, work, get a work job in a startup, have a good GitHub, things like that. So I'd have a lot of junior devs coming back up. So you've got, you got to give back to the community, even though we couldn't work with them, I'd still give them the time of day. So like become, you know, follow them on Instagram yeah, 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 and yeah, talk yeah. to them and stuff like that. You've got to, you know, give back. I think, you know, well, yeah, giving back, definitely getting a Jake Whitby follow on Instagram, mate. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but just like, Yes, in the back of your mind, it is just like, you know, if yeah. if a couple of years down the line, we're going to bill, maybe bill with you kind of thing. But, but it can't be your only mindset. No, it otherwise. can't be your only mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, like, it sounds a bit cheesy, but we're changing people's lives, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. And no, mate. If, we, if think... we can give that advice to, yeah. to help someone change their lives and do what they want to do, I'm all for it. Yeah, I think, no, I think that's a good point that you said there. Because I think, if I think early on, again, in my sort of recruitment career and you're being taken to these networking events and it's like, oh. How many business cards can I get? Mm. That isn't no, but as in like that yeah. isn't the way for me. Nah. That isn't, and then when I realise, well, actually no, that is definitely not how you should approach it. Yeah, and the reason why, reason the reason why, from my in my opinion, experience is like you end up putting too much pressure on yourself. Nah, the first the first like hour, I I go and speak to as many people as I can. Like so just introduce. That, yeah, so in the next hour, you know who to have yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, good yeah. conversations with, and who's gonna, you know, who can you influence, and the interesting people that are in your your kind of area because mm. at the networking events is probably 80% of the people you know irrelevant to what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve mm. but you're still like you know having a chat with them and stuff like that yeah, yeah, yeah no that makes sense and then and then would you and then what was the approach after these events was it you're following up yeah staying in touch yeah like I said it was never we obviously want to see if they're hiring but it's not every conversation like yeah, yeah. are you hiring yet are you hiring yet are you hiring yet mm. it would be a case of you know what they do you know what they're trying to achieve yeah Oh, you read this article. Oh, that's perfect for them. Oh, have you seen this? Yeah. Ah, oh, no. Ah, oh, open conversation. Oh, yeah, I have. What was your thoughts on it? Again, open yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just that, offering. That was the key thing then. Yeah, it's just offering more than just have you got any jobs, mm. haven't you? I think have you ever hosted key. any events? I haven't yet, personally. To be honest, that's that's that makes money um, for recruit for tech recruiters. But um, it's something we're we're working on. Mm, um, we've had a big part of a, my kind of BD this year is is kind of finding out exactly what events are because you can put an event on, but then like these CTOs that I'm kind of networking with, are they going to go? Have they got the time of day to go to a networking event? Maybe. Mm, mm. Mm, yeah, when when you're speaking with them, have they actually? Mm. So you've got to make it relevant. Like, what are they interested in? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I've got kind of a you know a a spreadsheet, you know, a list now of kind of what all, all my network are interested in. Yeah, and good. it's just it's just putting it together. You got to bear in mind, kind of, when the time's right. Mm. To wrap up America, then, mate. Yeah. No, thanks for adding that. I think that, I think that's really useful for people. Um, and actually, just quickly on that, how did you make mates over there? So. Did you do anything? I thought all Americans were chumps, <laughs> like all the guys like our age, like American jocks, like the LA people, grade A chumps. To be you honest, didn't really like them. They just English guys, just different viewpoints. Yeah, <laughs> most of my like most of my mates were over English recruiters. Really, I was quite lucky. Like, there's a, a company called Console. We called them like yeah, the Console yeah, Boys. Yeah, like nice group of guys, and like they could tell that like me and like the Lewis, the other girl, were just like moving to this brand new country. We were on our own. There was yeah. only three of us in the office, so it's not like we went and with proper sound. Yeah, it wasn't like there was loads of us in the office. Where you you find like the recruitment companies out there like they stay in the like the friendship circles yeah so we we met like multiple like recruitment company circles oh, of mates enough. that's cool yeah so yeah but like everyone everyone is in the same position so everyone's yeah. everyone's friendly no i think that's a good point because i think yeah if you know if you're going to america or thinking about it like mm. definitely reach out to other recruiters yeah, what, that you know they're from the uk or whatever so no another, another one as well i can't remember i can't remember the, no, the company name but um but uh, again cool. this group of guys that just like Everyone knows what position. So you're what? In. Um, what should if I'm a recruit right now? I've got a couple mm. of years experience. Yeah, I'm getting absolutely peppered by Rex or Rex. Yeah, my boss is saying, look, 
got I think you should do America, blah blah blah. Mm. Just to to finalise that and wrap that up, mate. What what should that recruiter listening right now be thinking about? The, what should they seem like, to be considering there's, about? There's two ways, isn't it? If you're in a company and being that person that's setting it up for them, yeah. make sure you've got some clients before you go. Okay. So build it up before you go. Yeah, because you don't want to go and be like me and blank for six months. Yeah, have yeah. no, have so no definitely commission build it up in. before you go. Yeah, definitely. And then what about, and then what other things should they be thinking if about? If you're, um, like I said, client base, pick a good location. Mm. You've got to be prepared. Like we went to LA, it was so expensive. Was it? Yes, take take some savings. It's a big move as well. Like, have you lived away before? Mm. Can you Can you cope? Are you... It's something bad, but are you good at just going making friends in a random yeah, place? Yeah, that's no, true. Um, and then if you're someone on the other side of it where you're getting a lot of recruiters pesting you, I would do your research in every company, mm. you know, and speak to some people there. Yeah. Um, I'd probably try and speak to people that have done it. Yeah. And so speak to people there. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know, message me if you guys want, if you get in them chats. I'm yeah. always happy to kind of, you know, share the pros and cons. Mm. Um, look in the companies. One, one of my friends from here just went, like, went, like, last couple of months ago to New York because mm. he had an American bird. Mm. Um, like, look where you want to live as well. Yeah, like, actually try and get to spend some time out yeah. there a bit before maybe. Yeah, see if they'll fly you out there as well. Because mm. if a company's keen on you, you know, they, it's they're, in their ha- interest. they're happy to invest 10K in you in your visa and getting you out there to see the office if you're a decent biller because money's to be made out there. Yeah, yeah. you'd, you'd like to think that they'd, spend, they'd pay for a six, yeah. seven, eight hundred... Exactly. Pound flight to go and check it yeah. out and get make, a feel of the vibe. Make sure if you do go there, you know, make sure they kind of put you up for like two weeks a month in a hotel because you know finding a place is stressful. Yeah, especially when you just moved in a new place and might not have yeah, many friends. Brilliant. But most of the companies I feel out there now because it, it's been like two, three years, hasn't it? Everyone's mm. been on their, like, the American journey. The setup, you know, you're not going to be their first person to go. So they, yeah, should, yeah, they yeah. should have, you know, you should look at to see how many people they've taken over there because then they'll have a, like a decent process and yeah. to make sure you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's some really good advice, mate. So, um, back to uh, back home, back home in Manny, back to Manny, <laughs> um, and uh, so been here for nearly a year. Yeah, now, mm-hmm. um, and you're now a contract. Yeah, recruiter. Yeah, went back tech contract recruiter. Tech contract. Recruit a London. Bit different. Very different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. What um what's been going on? Like how it's, have you found it's it? It's been it's been back to square one, building your market. Like I'm I'm basically gone to back back to being kind of like a junior recruiter in a new market. Man. You've got to go back to you know, back you to the that, principles. Mate? Because I saw I saw big contract billers um, that contract make money. decent money. And the first few years are tough, but then it gets easier. And I was always just looking at them like, I'm better than you at this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my process is nailed on. I feel like I'm better with candidates and clients. So it's been hard because it's mostly BD. You know, I've gone from headhunting, which is all client, all candidate work, to mostly BD work. So what's been the biggest challenge so far? Biggest challenge is London is just probably like having conversations with these people. But like actually getting hold of having them. Co- because you BD a company, 90% of them will have either don't use recruiters or have an internal team. So yeah. there's probably only 10% of companies that will talk to you. And out of them 10% companies, say if there's 10 of them, nine of them won't even hire contractors. So just like the, the amount of companies, and especially with the changes of like IR35 yeah. and Brexit, mate, it's it's just tough finding the people. That's where you've got to have deeper, meaningful conversations with your, with your clients other than just have you got a job. Mm. That's where kind of being interested in tech comes in and having having your list of like 100 candidates and clients you can just have a chat with and see what's happening in the market because, you know, they're going to know pro- what projects are happening. They're going to know who's building an MVP and, and kind of ready to take out to market. So mm. so how have you approached it then? Like what's been the process? Been the process again, starting from like, scratch. Yeah, starting much. from scratch. Like actually from scratch? Starting from scratch, yeah. We had, a, we had a few key clients. But yeah, starting from scratch, um, a big a big thing for me is kind of a few things. Data, you know, being prepped. You know, you don't want to be spending nine till ten thirty sorting your data out. You know, you need to be prepped for you. You know, like your core sessions. What are your core sessions you meant to talk to like, about? Nine, the, the like structure? I'm just talking like nine to twelve and like two till five or two mm. to like half five. What are you doing in those time in that time? Like being proactive and just like just having conversations with people. Trying, trying to have yeah, conversations trying to get on with the people. Phone. Really? Yeah. Like you're messaging people, you're messaging people on LinkedIn, and like I said, like getting your data ready, and then after a few months in the market, speaking to candidates, speaking to clients, y- you become friends with 
people, like mm. I said. So I've got my list now of like 100 candidates, 100 clients, well, more, candid more candidates to clients because there's a lot more contracts out there mm. than what well, contracts is, than contracts. So, and just getting your name out there, that stuff. But, you know, the first year in everyone's market, it's always tough. Yeah, it's tough. Unless you walk and walk into a warm, mm. warm market. But we're just starting to like really see the fruits of our labor now. Really? Yeah, when the team, when I came in here, it was just another guy and the director. And now we're a team of four with another guy joining. Really? And we've went from like two runners out. We're like over like 25 now in the space of a year. So. And how do you think, and then how have you just, great? how have you got better at, I guess it's just, I guess it's been a process as you're saying, but anything to sort of just, people one, listening in terms of the BD, do you know, I don't know. Yeah, one, any... one thing goes back to it and is, is kind of like reading. So I'm reading like, startup books like the lean startup for example and kind mm. of and why are you doing that i guess a for me to learn but then to have better conversations yeah with that's, people. that's good because if i if i'm talking to a startup and i've noticed they've changed the product and you can go up to them and be like oh you've iterated the product there i can see that why have you done that nice that's such a better conversation they've yeah. got oh, have you got any contract roles mate yeah, yeah to the yeah. other hundred other recruiters calling them up yeah because even if you get them on the phone and half the time they tell you they don't have time they're in a meeting mm. And um, it's saturated market tech recruitment, isn't that? Yeah, man. That's mad. It is. How, how have you dealt with, like, is it just all these you know things what? you're there's, talking there's, about There's bare recruiters out there, but how, how many of them are actually decent? Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. How many of them are just going to be junior recruiters, joined a company, got told to do this, or how many of them are gone into a company, they've got loads of key accounts that they'll just work on? Mm. Which we'll get there. You know, we're only a year in. Mm. We'll get there. And um, fair enough, mate. I guess how what what is this whole IR thirty five? So it's just piece, mate. government changing. But like, how is it? Like, how is it? How do you see it in, uh, impacting from what you've? Oh, it's already so impacted, mate. In what way? So I'm when I go meet my candidates now and clients. Like, so I went to a meeting last week. Took all my took all my runners out, all my contractors out for um for de for uh, meal for yeah. lunch. At one point, everyone around the table asked me kind of what's happening with IR35. Really? So there's there's six people, well, five including the dev manager, so six, everyone at them at one point. Because, because it can really shake up the market and there's a lot of uncertainty around it, companies don't know what to do. Mm. So I'm- and When does it come I'm into play? Like April next year. April next year. So I'm just like cluing myself up and speaking to... So there's an element of people don't know. Yeah, people don't know, but... The, we, but that means then the decisions and the decisions. People don't know because really there's not, that inf not much information out there, but the information is there. You just got to go find it and gain an understanding of it so then you can consult. You know, that's what we're con all consultants, aren't we? Yeah. If I can consult with a CFO of how he's going to save money, how I could save him 20, 30 grand on a, on a project for six to 12 months, mm. he's going <laughs> to give me that time of day, isn't he? Mm. Um, and especially all the big banks in the past week have said they're going to get rid of all the contractors. Really? So, yeah, like the next six months is going to be interesting, especially with Brexit in the contract market. Mad. So that's why you need to be... How are you preparing for that, bro? <sighs> a bit of a cliche, but being different. It's like yeah. having conversations yeah. other than just have you got jobs. You know, being rememberable. Yeah. Memorable? Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Me yeah, memorable. 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 That yeah. yeah. Um, that's fair enough, man. I think that's... That Instead of just ringing them up and asking if you've got jobs, like, what are you offering mm. if you're just ringing up and asking for a job? Because these, like, I plan I plan to be doing Contract London now for the next, like, four or five years. Really, before, really you know, double down yeah, on that. Yeah, exactly. That's that's my plan. So, you know, I'm going to be dealing with these people for, yeah. for quite a while. I can imagine as well being around, like, the uncertain stuff, the stuff ultimately you don't have control of. It's like, I just feel like it'd be a, a good thing to be positive about and, and view it from a, posit a positive way and see what the exactly. opportunities There's are. Exactly, there's challenges actually, in the market. Yeah. But if you see them challenges as opportunities, mm. then you're going to stand, you know, head and shoulders yeah. above the rest. I think that that's what the best recruiters will do, right? They'll they'll look for the opportunities. They're not just going to let that sort of stuff paralyze them. And uh, start, it's, t it's uh, taken a couple of weeks of thinking of how I'm going to do this. You mm. know, you look at you look at a challenge and then you, you reflect upon it and seeing, you know, how can I, how can my, how can kind of my clients use my services to get over this challenge yeah. more effectively and how can I add more value than the hundred other contract yeah, recruiters? Yeah, yeah. So what, what's been, what's been the, so I'm a perm recruiter right now thinking about contracts. My mate's contract bill is telling me all about all the money he's getting. Mm. What, 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 
what do I need to know and fully understand now you're nearly a year in the game of being a... You're going to be chasing the jobs a lot more. Mm. You know, you're going to be... Be it's, comfortable with It's BD. going from 80% sourcing to 20% BD or even to 100% sourcing. You know, you want to get to a position pain where you're not doing BD yeah, and yeah, yeah. your roles are coming in. You basically become a resourcer for yourself going to the opposite end of the spectrum where, you know, 90% of your time is... So you've got to be comfortable with BD. Yeah, that, yeah you've got to. If you can't... If you're... I'd say if you're good at BD, contracting is for you. Really? If you, there's, you know, everyone's different and everyone's got their own skills and abilities. But yeah, if you're more of a resourcer or if you don't like getting on the phones or don't like going to events and speaking with people, it's going to be tough. But, I would, you know, if your company's got some key, key accounts, then yeah. Mm. Have you been going to events in London? Yeah, we're going for a few. There's a few. How's that been going? Really well. Yeah. Yeah, really well. There's a couple couple of key ones we go to like every month. And has that helped you win on clients or? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then, and then, people, then some of, some of, so if you've got some big clients, they will probably hold events. Get yourself Can't to them. Get an yeah, there'll be people there that you don't know. In How the do business. you get invited? Well, if you pally with the internal rec, which if you're delivering, you should be, you just yeah, yeah. kind of come to this event. I can, I can, see, I, I can about see, that add a, I can see that add value to our company. So like one of my clients always does like that HR is really big and they always put on like HR events and that's going to, Help our help mm. Oakwell Hampton. Fair enough. Mm. Um, if you was if you was to communicate to uh, Jake early on in your recruitment career, mm. what would you say? No, what you know now. It's a tough one. What's Just been? like keep at it. Like the times when, like the troughs, for example. Yeah. When you're going two, three months, like not billing. Just like keep at it. Because, mm. like, there'd be times where, like, I remember once, like, looking at other jobs, mm. like, looking at things away from recruitment, is this for me, kind of thing. That had that probably conversation kind of every couple of months in, in my own head. Really? But then it's, you know, you just got to remember the good times. Mm. You know, you got you got to remember, like, this this game's taking me, taking me to L.A. and stuff like that. And mm. I don't think a company would have asked me to go to L.A. if, you know, you're not a half-decent recruiter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, help, what helps you keep at it, do you think? Setting goals. Setting goals. Setting goals is massive, mate. Not like yearly goals, but like weekly, monthly goals. So really? at the start of this year, I really wanted to go to Brazil. Oh, no. Really, really wanted to go to Brazil. And it was like, right, I need to get starting contracts. I need to get X amount of runners. So by this time, I will have... Oh, so you really broke it down. Really broke it down. You've got, you've got to. You've got to. And no, you right. If you don't, then you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And those, them like weeks gave me so much, motiv them like weeks and a few months gave me so much motivation when I was starting up a market where you do need, you need to be on the phones all day, every day. You might not pull a job for like a month, two months mm. because there's, it's just there's so difficult to find jobs. So you need that extra oomph to get up in the morning. Yeah. So if you're just waking up and like, oh, I've got to go, you know, got to go to the office, just smash out the phone, send loads of emails. Be Whereas if you're getting up plan. in the morning saying, right, I'm going to smash today because I'm going to Brazil in a couple of months. It's it's a lot it's a lot easier mentally to yeah. plan and prepare and and like I said you know I've got goals for like two three years and things like that yeah and I know I guess from my experience I know if I kind of keep at it and with the strategy that we're using in terms of bringing new clients on board and mm. and things like that that we will get there and you kind of achieve those goals no I like that mate so have goals and those goals make sure you really break down know mm. what activity and things you need to be doing yeah. on a weekly monthly basis that is going to help you get there. So goals and then nailing down your process. Nice. I think, like, like I said before, like anyone can be taught this process mm. in recruitment. I feel like every, like you could literally write a, like a book of what to do every single call, every single yeah. step of the way. And as you, you know, your first year, like even if you don't do big numbers, just hone that craft. Just master it. Yeah, just master it. You're basically going back to school. Mm. And there'll be, you know, most companies will have you know, decent billers, they might even have a training partner or, you know, the directors, you know, hopefully you're in a company where your directors give you that time of day. Yeah. And luckily, I've, every company I've been in, I've been, but, you know, you hear some some stories. Yeah. So, yeah, like, goal setting and process. Yeah, And nice. if you nail that down, kind of all the peaks and troughs through recruitment will take care of themselves if you kind of, you know, have have those. Mm. Okay, mate, as we finish then, mate, mm -hmm. what... How do you how do you see this uh, whole recruitment world planning out, mate? 
from Me your perspective. Personally or yeah. just not just as in like yeah, like everyone says recruitment's changing and oh yeah, do you know what I mean. Like how be the first word. How do, how how do you see it changing in your perspective? So I noticed when I went to America that in- internal was massive. Really? Coming back, I've noticed it massive. I know a lot of my friends going internal. Um, someone told me this happened about 10, 15 years ago, though, like the early noughties. Yeah. So I think it'll be a cycle. It's, you know, companies realising they're spending a lot of money on recruitment and they could have a couple of internal people and save the money. Mm. That's all it is. Unfortunately, though, churn of not good recruiters will make them, you know, take up with a partner. Mm. I want to get to a position where I can you can partner with these companies and take a, take away that aspect mm. of the headache and do it for, you know, my, like, I guess like retain recruitment. Yeah. You know, you need to be offering your clients more than just, oh, you've got a job, I'll fill it. You need to kind of help yeah. them grow the business with their branding. You need to like, offer real, like, yeah, like, real, real solutions. Like be, a, be a business partner. Yeah. Um, and you see recruiters are going to have to go more that way. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just going to be one of them, one of them kind of recruiters that just switches jobs every three six months, or an internal recruiter that just kind of sits there every three six months and you know ruin the breakdown and the candidate kind of attraction to companies. Because I've worked with companies where you're working with internal recruiters, and for some reason, through lack of training and things like that, um, the process is not nailed down, and candidates then are just like, well, I interviewed two weeks ago and I've not heard back. Yeah, yeah, like candidates Lose talk. Out candidates talk in the market. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And no, you're so right. it, um, I was um, resourcing all the other week, and I rang someone, and he, he was like, "Oh, my friend told me," and I was just like, "Nah, I'm not going forward for it." Mm. It could have been a great fit, but because the process wasn't nailed down, and it just you know it could affect companies. Yeah, of course. Totally get that. Mm. Before how do you how do you think it's changing? Then I'll throw that one back at you. How do I think it's changing? Yeah, yeah. I think it's a lot of what you said. I think. Um, so I'm in a sort of this weird pocket of like speaking to people like you and then speak to other businesses. Mm. And I think definitely from, from what I'm seeing, it's businesses that are willing to take a risk and try and offer real solutions to real client problems. So if that's putting um, five Jake Whitby's on site for four days a week and offering a real talent solution where you then get involved in the talent strategy and yeah, the interview process and the candidate experience and actually really impact that as well as deliver the jobs. I think uh, that, source. that's exactly kind of, you know, the strategy I've been talking about with my directors, to be honest. Yeah, so there, this, there's that going on. There, so there's this sort of whole embedded on-site solution where... Kind of similar, more yeah, or less the same, yeah. isn't it? So like it's, um, yeah, it's the same sort of thing, but it's, it's that. It's like, um, you pay me X per month, you get a dedicated do you know how much some, Do you know how much some of the companies are charging out for that? Do I know how much? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to vary, mate. I mean, you're looking at three, six months contracts. So... I was speaking to some, speaking to some exact embedded model, one of the big players, 10 grand a seat a month. 10 grand a seat? 10 grand for a seat. Yeah. What, you I, think that's expensive? <sighs> expensive for someone that's not been in recruitment a while. And yeah, I guess it depends. Like if you're again. putting, if someone's got six months experience at recruit in, a, in an agency that, like, no offence, like it's not worked for some reason or another, whether yeah, that's yeah, lack yeah. of training. No, you're right. I and th- I and think they're I've charging 10 grand out. Like, yeah, it's mad. It's ridiculous. But again, uh, you got a fa- you got a favor uh, again at the same time. Like these people trying to solve real problems, it's all going to be a process how they really, mm. really deliver for their clients. But I think that 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 will be interesting how that plays out, how agencies will respond. At the same time, what what I will say on this point is that a lot of agent, a lot of people saying it's changing, blah blah blah. There's a lot of people not changing. Oh, you gotta be. We've got to. You gotta reiterate your products every now and then. You can't. But honestly, mate, like, there's a lot of people not doing not doing anything to change. Well, they're the people that just be by the wayside, won't they? I know, but it's... you might not. You know, if you've got some massive key accounts where you're billing hundreds of thousands of pounds in, all you gotta do is look after your accounts, isn't it? But yeah. If you're yeah. a company like Oakwell, four years in the market. You, you know, you've got some a really good team and a really nice office in Manchester. You you do need to iterate and kind of go Mate, at times and, you know, create... This market is very saturated and if you can kind of create your own little space and your own little offering... Yeah. Well, there you go, mate. You've, you've fucking cracked it. So it's exciting to see how that all plays out. It is. It's going to be... An ex- I think the next... Brexit, when Brexit's all finished, it's going to be exciting. When I have 35's finished, but I think next year... We'll, we'll see. I, I have my own thoughts what will happen next year, but I think once everything happens with Brexit calm down, we'll be the UK, I'll just go back to normal and it'll just be smashing it again. Mm. So um, 
What are you excited about, mate? Before I ask your last question, what's going on in uh, your world that you want to shout about? Um, what inside, outside recruitment? I don't Whatever know. you want, mate. Whatever you want to shout. Just finishing, about. finishing the year off on 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 a good note, really. Going like, to Brazil? Uh, nah, not again. Um, oh, you already been? Yeah, I went. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, exactly. Goal setting. Goal yeah. setting. Yeah, I went to Sao Paulo and Rio uh, to see my girlfriend. Really? Yeah, that I met over in LA. Oh wow, nice. Um, How's that? Um, that was Sao Paulo was all right. Rio was sick. Really? Yeah, I'd definitely, I'd definitely be going back there. Why was it sick? It's just like. Like just seeing like all the shanty towns, like doing yeah. all the touristy spots, the beach, Copacabana Beach. Yeah, yeah going like to the Christ Redeemer statue and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, it was a really sick trip. And obviously, like like I said, like goal setting. I wouldn't have been able to get there if I didn't set them goals and yeah. have that kind of drive to get up and get on with my work. Um, but yeah, that's she's she's going to be moving over here at the next year, so oh, I think that'll so, be it. Sold her getting Man- old, mate. Sold, getting old. Sold, and- sold her the Manchester dream. Oh, she loves it. To be fair, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair though, she likes London as well, which is annoying. <laughs> <laughs> fair um, enough, mate. Well, um, look. Last question I always ask people, mate, is um, look, if you could communicate to every single recruit out there, they'd listen and take on your advice. Could be a phrase, a word, sentence. What? Peaks and troughs. What, that? what do you mean? Peak, like there's a good times, but there's some good. There's some good times, but there's the bad times, and you know, as long as the good times outweigh the bad times, like that, that's you, you enjoy it, yeah. And like people in the like getting into the game, it is fun. Mm. Like if my first few years in recruitment, like when I was at Energize, it was it was great, yeah. it was sick, yeah. And now here, like it's weird because I'm getting a bit older and I'm seeing How kind of I'm 27. <laughs> so I know I say I'm getting older, but that's, Mate, like, that's nothing in it. Come on, bro. You see, like here, like we hire juniors and train them up, and yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's good to see like them like always going out on like yeah, Thursday yeah, yeah, and Friday, yeah. whereas you don't I don't go out as much anymore. Yeah. Um, no, I know what you're saying. So like, have fun and like, if you can talk to people and you're in a good a good like working environment they will teach you the process yeah. and like I said like have fun it nice. is it is it is fun Jake it's been a pleasure mate thanks very much Cheers, buddy bro.